had a fun job come to the shop recently that I took care of. And it included reverse engineering. So taking an existing part, uh, designing it in CAD, and then some thoughtful programming, um, and a lot of machining, as you're going to see. So starting off with the stock pieces of material, this is 6061 aluminum, 10 inches by 15 inches by 3.5 inches thick. And we're going to be machining these four pieces on this Morisiki horizontal, which is a really fun machine, really accurate. Uh, but before that, we got to get the model. So here I am, uh, 3D scanning, and you can see the existing model here. And some old friends of mine have a 3D scanner that I actually used to work for. But you can see the, the mesh appearing on the screen there. And this is just giving me the data to actually draw out the CAD model, which you can see here. And I brought it into Fusion after I uh, designed it using the, the mesh. And you can see the features uh, here. Kind of, There's going to be some 3D machining, pocketing. Uh, obviously a lot of material removal and you're going to see the mesh here that I used and I actually used a, a separate software to uh, design the part uh, which was Geomagic Design X uh, but just brought a low res version into Fusion so you can see uh, kind of the overlap and there's that scan model which th with the scanner I used was uh, within a few tenths uh, from the, the actual real life model so I know my CAD model is going to be pretty accurate and just getting the first stop set up here holding the, the raw stock and 10 inch aluminum soft jaws and just going to center it to the vise and I got that within one thou so that's some that's my eye precision is plus or minus one thou <laughs> but after I got tightened up the machinist you know you got to get those love taps but first one's gonna feel right so there you go and first tool is a face mill a drill just for pre-drilling for the uh, my half inch end mill and my five eighths end mill I'm just gonna find the center of the block here um, and uh, pre-drill is yes for the end mills to go ahead and have a starting hole to just plunge in and then start side milling but also uh, it gives me a uh, hole to find the center for my second op. So thinking ahead here, and you'll see why. But starting with those pre-drilled holes, and gonna switch to a half inch and mill. Just machine away all the features that I can with this tool. Now we're doing four ops, two roughing and two finishing and that's more so because there's a lot of material to remove and I just want to get the part roughed out and uh, worry about being precise on the finish work later on so you can see that, that was the work that my half inch did and I'm going to move to the 5 eighths the half inch is moving at 140 inches a minute 5 eighths is moving at 100 inches a minute and my radial, just depending on my depth of cut, varies. But here you can see that 5 eighths kind of went to town there. <laughs> and it was too much for the chip augers to handle. But you can see the two main tools here for the first stop. And I got all four of them roughed out. Um, and I left uh, a parallel surface. Uh, so I have two flat edges to basically use the same jaws and uh, basically eliminating setup time. Um, so this allows me to use the same jaws and just clamp, uh, clamp again and just centering it to the features. And this is the pre-drill hole that I was talking about. Uh, that hole breaking through gives me uh, something to uh, use as my work zero since I do have the profile roughed out, I don't want to necessarily use the stock to find the center. So, again, half inch, five eighths is gonna do the majority of the work here.
half inch, switching back to the five eighths. Got a deep feature. In a close up, you can see those chips just flying out of there with that half inch. This is back to the half inch. And just starting that pocket, and obviously the coolant is very important here to flush out those chips, which if you stick around to the end, you will, in fact, see why. And again, I love this machine, horizontal obviously for evacuating chips, but Morisiki really rigid, just really precise, and I got good spindle RPM, even though this is an older machine. And that was my second op, uh, roughed out the main features. And again, I left an edge parallel with uh, the opposite edge so that I can again use the same jaws and this is just reducing setup time um, so that I don't have to machine jaws to the profile so you can see I'm using that same pre-drilled hole which again just saves time you know just wanting to get the, the job in and out as efficiently as possible while still being you know, precise and, and accurate and pu putting in uh, attention to detail. So I started the, this is the third op, uh, doing finishing work. And this is just you know, one of the, one of the finish passes for the outside profile. But this operation is going to obviously do finish profile work, finish that pocket, do the holes. And you can see one of the through holes um, if you're a machinist, you'll know, hey, clearance is clearance, <laughs> whether it's one thou or, you know, half an inch. So, so this is the first, the, well, the third op, and the first finishing op, and you can see my profile finishes and my holes. Um, and obviously roughing is, is fun. Uh, to see the machine, the machining side, but finishing is, you know, obviously nice to look at the the finish work. And obviously, I'm measuring as I go, making sure I'm uh, all my distances and everything are, are correct, that it's machined correctly. So here we're going to start the last op, and now we do have to machine jaws. And right there, that that top jaw is going to um, hold that kind of curved surface and the bottom jaw will just be a step jaw so I'm just going to get these, uh, these you know, new set of jaws well, uh, jaws that we had that are going to work for this I'm going to get them set up here in the vise And this was all mapped out in CAD. You know, I drew out my jaws with the with the part, overlaying them, and saw you know what clearance I had and stuff, how much I had to clamp onto. gonna get them tightened down here uh, before I put it back in the machine gotta apply tension to the jaws to the movable jaw so we're gonna just clamp this thin parallel um, I'm gonna be dropping I want the part to sit uh, pretty far into the jaws basically as much as possible just so I don't have to clamp down so hard 
and, and basically compensating that with more of a clamping face. So made my jaw program to machine obviously that curved surface but also just the step on the bottom since I'm already sending the program and machining them. And again using an edge finder here just to find the center of both the top jaw and the bottom jaw. I'm going to be actually be using that half inch that I use in the program because you know, these are aluminum jaws. So. So I got those machined, got it back outside, and if you're wondering why before I wasn't rotating the part out, uh, I'm sure you saw the material was pretty big, <laughs> and uh, I just did not want to mess around and find out that the material was going to hit as it was rotating in. But I know since I dropped the part down here that everything's going to clear when it rotates in. And you can see, uh, I actually added these, I guess you can call them ma makeshift machinist vices, or, or sorry, jacks. Um, and this was actually after uh, I ran the first part uh, because I just heard some chatter on that top flange. Um, and I added those, those jacks to kind of absorb that vibration, and it did, uh, did work out. So here you can see I'm indicating which is now what is what is now a finished hole uh, to find to get my work zero. And here now that I'm doing the finished work, I'm locating on a finished surface. I'm checking how far or the flatness of this rough surface, and you can see I'm measuring what my distance is from one into the other, and that distance should match the indicator uh, from one side to the other. So, meaning if I'm off uh, 5 thou on one side, I should see the indicator go from 0 to 5 thou as I go across. And just some simple finishing work with those same tools, and you can see the part came out really nice. And I'm really happy with the outcome. Uh, like I said, it was fun machining, you know, a lot of machining. Um, I'm just going to get them all four cleaned up here, uh, deburred them, uh, made sure there was no sharp edges. And, you know, I didn't talk too much about the programming, but I could definitely make another video and go more into detail about some of the decisions I made that made things easier and save time um, and why I did certain things. But really fun, you know, a machine in aluminum is always, always fun because you can really get after it, especially in the roughing ops. Um, you get nice finishes uh, during the finish ops. But that's all for now. Like I said, I could get more into detail with the technical stuff uh, if that's something you guys want to see. And you could always just let me know in the comments. Uh, I got some more more videos, uh, more video ideas, more things to film. Um, and if you want to you see that when they're, when they're posted, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, any comments, any questions, you know, I'm here. Um, I would love to hear any feedback that you guys have. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and hopefully uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.
This is me getting brave. Thinking that I could just use the air. Started off as a really good clip. But... Yep, this is why we run cool. This is why. Tragic.